What is going on everybody? This is John and you are watching Super Positive Games and I'm here with my E3 2021 recap. That is right, E3 came back this year obviously and I am here to cover every game that came out at all 16 showcases, maybe a bit too much in my opinion, we'll get to that later. But I'm covering all 16 showcases in about the length of just one. So everything from Ubisoft, Xbox, Nintendo, Capcom, and everything in between, all the indie showcases, Devolver, you name it, I'm going to cover it right now. There's a lot to get to. So it started off with Ubisoft's E3 press conference. The first thing that Ubisoft showed was Rainbow Six Extraction, formerly known as Rainbow Six Quarantine, but for obvious reasons, they went ahead and changed the name. It got a brand new trailer, plus a gameplay deep dive, and it's coming out September 16th of this year on Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PlayStation 5, and 4, PC, Stadia, and Luna. So Rainbow Six Extraction is going to be a lot different from Rainbow Six Siege, the multiplayer game. This is going to be a one to three player co-op PvE experience. You're going in, there are these freakish monsters, and you have to uh, kill all the monsters. It's a, it's a co-op experience. Locations like New York, San Francisco, Alaska, uh, you're still going to be using some stealthy tactics. You know, just like in Siege, moving around, you got to keep quiet. You don't want to alert the enemy team to your position. Same deal here. You want to, in the opening moments, this is shown off in the gameplay uh, kind of deep dive that they did. In the opening moments of these levels, you want to, uh, you know, not alert all of the enemies to your location. So you got to be a little bit quiet. Um, you know, I'm impressed that you're still using all of the gadgets that we know from Siege, but using all of the operators from Siege, by the way, and most of, from what I could tell, most of their gadgets are carrying over and you can use them still uh, in extraction in like new, uh, interesting ways here against these new enemy types. Um, my hype level for Rainbow Six Extraction isn't too high. Uh, you know, I have time to let that build up before it releases in September. I uh, It's been a while since I played Siege. It's been like a couple years now. This year is the year of the first person shooter. Rainbow Six joins the party <laughs> in September. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not like through the roof excited for the game yet, um, but hopefully I get there. Cause you know, it looks interesting. It looks like a good time. Uh, one, that one to three PVE Rainbow Six experience. Then Ubisoft had Rocksmith Plus. It's a music learning subscription service coming this year, and there's a closed beta out now. This is really isn't like a game. Uh, I, it's more of a actual uh, you know software meant for learning music. You hook up your guitar or instruments, and you. You know, there's a ver variety of different programs and features that they, they went into in the trailer, but Rocksmith Plus coming this year. Then, Riders Republic got a brand new trailer. It's coming September 2nd for Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and 5, PC, Stadia, Luna, Epic Games Store as well. So it's going to have some competitive multiplayer modes. It's going to have... Uh, team battles. It's gonna have a city playground where you could just chill out and and freestyle. Um, obviously, this is a kind of ex extreme sports kind of game with bikes and uh, mountain biking and and snowboarding and everything like that. It's got rocket wingsuits. It's got mass sixty four player races. Uh, th those are actually what I'm looking forward to the most out of the game is the sixty four player chaos races. Uh, kind of like uh, in the in the vein of Fall Guys almost. So yeah, Riders Republic, September 2nd. I'm really looking forward to that one. Then Rainbow Six Siege came back to the stage to announce that PC, Luna, and Stadia players will have crossplay and progression uh, on June 30th. And crossplay between Xbox and PlayStation will come in 2022. They also announced the new Defender with an animated trailer named Thunderbird. 
some live game updates they got into next in like a kind of sizzle reel, including For Honor Year 5 Season 2 Mirage, Trackmania Summer Content, Brawlhalla Cross Teenage Mutant, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Crew 2 with really nothing else. It ju they just showed The Crew 2. And then Watch Dogs Legion Bloodline, which is a DLC that brings Aiden Pierce and Wrench from Watch Dogs 1 and 2 into the game for a little story DLC, which I think is really, really cool. I love those games, 1 and 2 of Watch Dogs, and I love those characters. They're coming to Legion in this Bloodline DLC uh, that I don't think has a date yet. Get ready to dance your pants off with Just Dance 2022 coming November 4th to Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4 and 5, and Google Stadia. Some updates for Assassin's Creed Valhalla was up next, uh, detailing the Siege of Paris DLC is coming this summer, as well as the new Discovery Tour Viking Age coming in the fall. The show kind of slowed down a little bit with some TV and movie stuff from Ubisoft with a Mythic Quest trailer for the new season as well as a Werewolves Within movie trailer. Nothing like some TV crap in the middle of a video games press conference to really dampen the experience. Um, not a fan of that stuff here. Then Far Cry 6 came out with a new trailer slash cutscene. It's, it's a cutscene from the game, which I did not like seeing it's a it was a, a stunning cutscene some shocking stuff went down in it but it's obviously from like the first couple uh, probably from the opening of the game i would say but i didn't want to see that stuff it's a bit spoilery for me i think you know i was kind of disappointed on seeing that because i wanted to experience that kind of a cutscene in the actual game so i didn't i didn't like seeing that trailer or cutscene um but you know they showed it, so I saw it. Uh, season pass details for Far Cry 6. Uh, you could play as the iconic Far Cry villains such as Voss, Pagan Min, and Joseph Seed from Far Cry 5. That's actually a pretty cool one there. I, uh, you know, seeing the throwback stuff. I also wish they got Anton Castillo in there sometime after the game launches. That would be really cool as well. But yeah, and then Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon will also be included in the season pass as well for Far Cry 6. I am kind of uh, excited about it. Um, I, I really, really liked Far Cry 5. Far Cry 6 looks really cool. I'm all there. I'm there day one, Far Cry 6. But next they showed Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope with a reveal trailer. Showed off the villain a little bit called Cursa. It's got Rabid Rosalina in there, and it's a Nintendo Switch exclusive for 2022. Lastly, Ubisoft showed a reveal trailer for Avatar Frontiers of Pandora coming 2022 with an X on Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, PC, Stadia, and Luna. So yeah, that's an Avatar game. I'm not really into Avatar that much. Um, I didn't see the movie, maybe I will soon, now that there's a game, a triple-A Ubisoft game coming from, for it. But yeah, I'm hoping that this isn't just another Ubisoft open world, like an Assassin's Creed with an Avatar skin. I'm hoping this is something new and fresh. Maybe it's a linear game, whatever, but I'm hoping um, that it's something new and different from Ubisoft than what, what we've been used to from them. And that wraps it up for Ubisoft's E321 conference. I did not like the TV and movie stuff being there. I thought that instead of having that stuff, or instead of having the update stuff on Rainbow Six Siege and the live update stuff, they should have omitted all of that and instead included that Far Cry 6 deep dive that they did a couple weeks ago in here. I thought that would, would have been a, a better way to show everything, but... That's Ubisoft show. We have to move on to Devolver Digital. They're back. They do it every year. Their craziness, their wackiness. This year was no different. I thought this was one of their better shows in terms of all of that, that whole unique kind of presentation that they do. Uh, but they showed up to the party with eight video games. The first one was a new gameplay trailer for Shadow Warrior 3 coming 2021 still for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. Now, Shadow Warrior 3 was revealed last summer. Um, 
I thought they would come out with an actual solid date this year, but I suppose not. I'm in the middle of playing Shadow Warrior 2 right now. Uh, it's okay. I'm not loving it as much as I wanted to, but Shadow Warrior 3 is still on the way. Then, Trek to Yomi got a reveal trailer. It's coming in 2022 to Xbox Series X, S, PlayStation 5, and PC. This was probably the best looking of the entire show. It's kind of a Kurosawa-inspired 2D samurai game. It's in black and white. The action looks cool. The really, really interesting story or, or narrative going on there. Trek to Yomi's on my radar for sure. Like, I'm... I'm really, it's probably the best, my favorite of the Devolver show, and maybe one of my favorites of the entire E3 2021. One of my favorites there. Um, really looking forward to Trek to Yomi. Then Phantom Abyss is coming to Steam Early Access on June 22nd. Wizard with a Gun is coming in 2022 to Switch and PC. It's a multiplayer survival sandbox kind of adventure. Then Death's Door is coming on July 20th. To Xbox Series X, S, Xbox One, and Steam. July is going to be a busy, a uh, really busy year for indies. You already have the Ascent. You got Death Store here. You got uh, I'm blanking on a lot of them, but there are like three or four others. Chris Tales, one of them, uh, that are coming out next month. It's going to be a wild time for indies. Death Store is joining that party as well. Then Inscription is coming in 2021. This is a kind of horror card game i'm not really into card games but this inscription trailer got me in 100 percent because it looks like more than just a card game you're getting up from the table you're exploring the room there's some really weird stuff that looks like it's going on behind the scenes inscription's one of my favorites of e3 this year and again i'm not a card game type of gamer but inscription looks really cool um then it's it's tumble time uh it's devolver digital tumble time coming in 2021 uh to mobile google play in the app store it's one of those devolver digital branded kind of um um satirical type of things that they do uh almost every year uh, it's a mobile game then to round it out demon throttle is out now on nintendo switch only available via special reserve games you have to it's not available digitally only physically and you have to get it through special reserve games only for the switch that's demon throttle by the people um Dwarf soft who made gato robato last year a really cool game uh and that rounds out devolver digital show i really enjoyed it uh again my highlights for for this one trek to yami death's door coming next month and inscription all caught my eye caught my interest in meaningful ways i'm excited for those but we got to move on to Gearbox. That's right. Gearbox had a E3 show this year. Uh, I, you know, personally don't think they needed one. Um, and we'll get to that uh, after I get through here. Uh, but um, they start off with some behind the scenes action on their Borderlands movie. Uh, it's cool. But once again, this is a video game press conference. I, you know, I hate to be cynical like that, but you know, it's true. I didn't like when Ubisoft did it, and I did not like it when Gearbox did it, especially because they didn't bring the heat with anything else in this showcase. Uh, next, Homeworld 3 is in production. Uh, and then Tiny Tina's Wonderlands got a reveal trailer coming early 2022. I put reveal trailer in air quotes because it was actually at Jeff Keighley's kickoff live event uh, a couple days prior so it wasn't really revealed they just played the trailer again and had some extra commentary on it um tiny it's a borderlands kind of spin-off it's still connected to borderlands but it's gonna be this fantasy vibe instead of the sci-fi stuff still still using some of those characters that borderlands fans know and love uh and then homeworld 3 is in production Tribes of Midgard got a reveal trailer coming to PS4, PS5, and Steam on July 27th. Godfall is being backported to PS4 with a free PS5 upgrade included. Fire and Darkness expansion is on the way as well as the free Lightbringer update with matchmaking with a matchmaking beta, 40 plus new loot items, 50 plus new skins all on August 10th. Then 
Homeworld 3 is in production. That's right. This is the third time I'm bringing up Homeworld 3 because they did a thing where it's like almost like a commercial thing. So they they have to play the same trailer for it three different times throughout the showcase. Homeworld 3 is in production. And to round it all out, more Borderlands uh, behind the scenes movie stuff, this time with Kevin Hart. Gearbox, you didn't need a, a, an E3 show, and that's going to be a trend with some of the later shows as I get to them. Gearbox, uh, you know, this is all, this is all of this is E3 Coliseum stuff right here. None of this needs to be in a showcase. You could say Tiny Tina's Wonderlands could have could could justify it, but even then, like, just drop a trailer for it during E3. It doesn't need to be in a showcase or have it part of. You know, Xbox's showcase or some other showcase, but Gearbox's thing was a disappointment. It was a letdown. Homeworld 3 is in production. Gotta move on. Up next is the big boy. Xbox and Bethesda's E3 2021 showcase. This was argued, was probably the best show of E3 this year. I am an Xbox fan saying that. And I think Nintendo had a really great one, but I'm not a Nintendo fan, so I have no way to really measure uh, how great Nintendo's stuff is. Uh, uh, you know, somebody who is into Nintendo would be much better at that. But in terms of Xbox, I think they knocked it out of the goddamn park. Uh, you know, all gas from start to, to from the beginning to the end, from Todd Howard to Arcane coming out with the new IP. It was an incredible experience. Um, and they started it all off with Starfield with an in-engine teaser. This is their Creation Engine 2, so they upgraded their engine. It's a kind of a cinematic trailer, a very short, just show, showing off some of the environments, some of the um, in-engine stuff. It's got, you know, a, a little tease on how, on what the universe might be. Uh, there's a, the kind of, um, the, this organization called Constellation, that was mentioned in the trailer. Somebody, there was a voice on a radio talking about Constellation and becoming part of a family. So maybe Constellation is a big faction or organization within within the game. Uh, it's, it's an astronaut walking through a, the cabin of a ship, getting uh, into the launching seat, into the cockpit, flipping all the switches, getting into the seat, strapping in and getting ready to take off. Uh, that, that was a really cool trailer. Did I want more? Did I want a, a, a little bit of a gameplay demo? Yes, but I think what we got sufficed, I think, because uh, it's not coming this year. It's actually coming on November 11th, 2022. So we have a while to wait for Starfield. So it kind of makes sense that they didn't show us uh, anything more than what they did. Uh, you know, probably next E3 is going to be the big blowout for Starfield where we get to see what the, what the combat's like. We get to see what, you know, walking around the world is like. We're going to get more details next year because it is still uh, a year and a half away. But yeah, November 11th. It's weird that they, of next year, by the way, it's weird that they pinpointed an exact date for this game so far in advance, a year and a half in advance, Maybe they're very confident on that date and they know that they're going to hit it, which is why they came out here and and, and made that statement. Um, but yeah, it's coming November 11, 2022 for Xbox Series X and S, Windows 10 PC, and Xbox Cloud Gaming. It'll also be on Game Pass Day 1. Yes, it's been confirmed on the stage that it is, in fact, an Xbox ecosystem exclusive. It will not be coming to any other platforms other than Xbox. Um, so yeah, that's Starfield. It got me kind of excited to see more, but we're gonna have to wait a little bit, even though we have an exact date next fall. Next, Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl got a gameplay slash story trailer, and it's coming April 28th, 2022, to Xbox Series X, Windows 10 PC, and Xbox Cloud Gaming. It'll also be on Game Pass day one. Stalker 2 looks kind of cool. I wasn't sold on it before, but I think this trailer sold me. I'm a fan of Metro, the Metro series. This looks a lot like that. So I think I'm down for Stalker 2. Next, Back for Blood got a new trailer, and it's coming October 12th, as we know. 
I don't think that's a new date, but it's coming to Xbox Series X, Xbox One, Windows 10 PC, and Xbox Cloud Gaming, and it's on Game Pass Day 1. A lot of these games from this showcase will be coming to Game Pass in some way, shape, or form. Uh, I think I'm sold on Back for Blood. I wasn't before, but, you know, I... I'm into it. I'm into the kind of fun. It's very colorful, kind of COD zombies, but really refined experience. Back for Blood's on my radar, and I'm excited to try it out in October. Next, Contraband got a reveal trailer. Xbox is partnering with, with Avalanche Studios, the people, the studio behind the Just Cause series on an Xbox exclusive. This is Contraband. It looks, it's going to be a co-op game um, with single player, I, I believe. But yeah, it's going to be a co-op focused game based on heists and uh, smuggling some kind of contraband, as the title suggests. Uh, and it's coming to Xbox Series X. S, Windows 10 PC, Xbox Cloud Gaming, and it's coming to Game Pass Day 1. Obviously, all the first-party games, Game Pass Day 1 and permanently, by the way. Sea of Thieves came back with a Pirate's Life expansion reveal trailer coming June 22nd. Uh, this is going to have the Pirates of the Caribbean come into Sea of Thieves. You got Jack Sparrow. You got the cow. I, I think Gibby is one of them. Um... Yeah, I'm not too. F I've seen all the movies, but I, I I'm I don't know the names of all these characters. I only know Jack, but Jack and a myriad of other pirates characters are coming to see if thieves with a story uh, expansion. June twenty second, like I said, to Xbox Series X S, Xbox One, Windows Ten PC, X Xbox Cloud Gaming, and it'll be available on Game Pass. Then Yakuza Like a Dragon is coming to Game Pass, and it's on Game Pass right now. Yes, so Xbox has been uh, getting all the Yakuza games onto Game Pass. Yakuza Like a Dragon is the most recent one, came out last year, one of my favorite games of last year, and they got it on Game Pass right now for Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, Windows 10 PC, Xbox Cloud Gaming. Um, yeah, Yakuza Like a Dragon, seeing this trailer reminded me how much I love this game and all the characters and all the wackiness. I really need to get back into it. Battlefield 2042 came to the stage with a brand new trailer, really action oriented trailer. The, the game looks freaking <laughs> incredible. Um, as we know, it's coming October 22nd to Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One and Windows 10 PC. Uh, very excited for, for the new Battlefield game. It, it looks incredible. Um, I'm a big Battlefield fan, and just thinking about that game makes me, uh, you know, giggly because I'm just uh, looking forward to it a lot. But 12 minutes got a brand new trailer and a release date of August 19th. Common Xbox X and S, Xbox One, Windows 10 PC, Xbox Cloud Gaming, and it'll be on Game Pass Day One. 12 minutes is one of the most highly anticipated indie games out there. It's got the voices of James McAvoy, Daisy Ridley, and Willem Dafoe. Uh, it, it's a time loop kind of thing, so you got 12 minutes, and then it resets, and it resets, and it, it just looks awesome. A really cool drama game, indie game, coming in August. Psychonauts 2 got a brand new trailer and a release date of August 25th. Coming to Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, Windows 10 PC, Xbox Cloud Gaming, and it'll be on Game Pass Day 1. This is going to be my very first Psychonauts experience, and I can't wait. 10 Bethesda games are making their way onto Game Pass permanently right now. They are Arx Fatalis on PC, Dishonored Death of the Outsider on console, cloud, and PC, Doom 2016 for console and cloud, The Evil Within 2 for console, cloud, and PC, Rage for console and cloud, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus for console, cloud, and PC, Fallout for PC, Fallout 2 for PC, Fallout Tactics for PC, and The Goat Fallout 3 for console, cloud, and PC. Additionally, Doom Eternal is receiving a Series X and S optimization update on June 29th. It will be free if you already own the game. Fallout 76 came to the stage with the Steel Rain update. 
It's coming July 7th. Additionally, the Pit Expedition is coming to t in 2022. That's right, the Pit from Fallout 3, that DLC, coming to 76 in the form of an expedition. Whatever that means. I don't know what an expedition is in Fallout 76 because I don't play the game. And that's, of course, coming Xbox Series X, S, Xbox One, Windows 10 PC, and Xbox Cloud Gaming. The Elder Scrolls Online, couple updates for you. The next expansion will come in the fall. It will, and it has Series X and S optimization available now. Party Animals got a reveal trailer coming 2022. Coming to Xbox Series X, S, Xbox One, Xbox, and Xbox Cloud Gaming. Be on Game Pass Day One. That's kind of a, uh, if you're familiar with Gang Beasts, it's Gang Beasts with cute animals. Uh, it's a party. The critically acclaimed roguelike indie game named Hades. You might have heard of it. Got a trailer because it's coming to Xbox on August 15th. It's coming to Xbox Series X, Xbox One, Windows 10 PC, Xbox Cloud Gaming. And of course, it'll be on Game Pass. I'm excited to try that out. I'm not a huge fan of roguelike games, but seeing how talked about and how critically loved Hades was last year, uh, I got to try it out. Next, Somerville got a reveal trailer. It's coming 2022 for Xbox Series X, S, Xbox One, Windows 10 PC, and Xbox Cloud Gaming. It'll be on Game Pass Day 1. Somerville is a uh, indie game by a co-founder of Play Dead Games. Uh, if you're familiar with the makers of Limbo and Inside, uh, I forgot this this uh, person's name, but he broke off of Play Dead and formed his own studio. And they are making this is their very first game, Somerville. It has it. I, I could feel it. I could see it. I could feel it. That um, Play Dead vibe, that DNA in Somerville. So I'm really, really excited for this for this indie game. It really caught my attention. One of the best looking games of E3 2021, in my opinion. Very excited for Somerville next year. Halo Infinite. It's time. It's time. Halo Infinite got a new story trailer in engine and a multiplayer reveal trailer. And it's coming holiday 2021. This year still no solid release date yet. Um, I was expecting a, an actual date. Still didn't get one for some reason. But yeah, so they showed off Infinite again after last year's kind of disaster. Uh, visual disaster this year. This time, I think it looks a lot better. It looks improved from the you know lighting the textures everything about it it looks like a step up from what we saw last year uh and then you know they, they gave us a little bite of the story there showing chief kind of uh, floating through some debris making his way over uh you know to cortana he used the grappling hook so the cutscenes and gameplay are going to transition seamlessly so when he when you're coming out of a cutscene, the camera's gonna whoosh seamlessly go into Chief's helmet, and and it's gonna be that first person perspective, and game and and you're gonna be in the gameplay. So, it's got that going on, and it, it the, the story looks like it's got a lot of care put into it. Um, it it looks like a focus. The story doesn't seem like a kind of afterthought, because uh, a lot of times a lot of Halo fans only care about multiplayer. And I understand that, but. The, the story feels like it's front and center with the Halo experience, the Halo Infinite experience. So I'm very, very excited for that campaign. My most anticipated game of the year right now is Halo Infinite for me for that for that story campaign. Uh, can't wait for that. And then the multiplayer reveal, it's cr it looks crazy. It's that kind of physics based, um, uh, you know, Halo gameplay that that we all know and love. You know, you're throwing grenades behind a weapon on the ground to put to to you know make it explode towards you, so you could grab the weapon. You know, a lot of customization options. The capture the flag mode looks awesome. The the vehicles, everything about this multiplayer looks like a ton of fun. I and I can't wait for it to come out uh, this holiday. Uh, of course, it's coming out to Xbox Series X. S, Xbox One, Windows 10 PC, Xbox Cloud Gaming, and it's coming to Game Pass Day 1. Yeah, so that's Halo Infinite. Very excited for the campaign and that awesome-looking multiplayer stuff. 
But we got to move on to Diablo 2 Resurrected with a reveal trailer September 23rd. This is a remaster of Diablo 2. Coming to Xbox Series X, Ser uh, Series S, Xbox One, and Windows 10 PC. Then, perhaps the biggest surprise of the show, the most hype moment, a Plague Tale Requiem got a reveal trailer coming 2022. A Plague Tale Innocence was one of my favorite games of 2019, and I did not think we were going to see another a sequel to it. A Sobo a studio, obviously the ones behind it. Um, I always thought a Sobo, because a Sobo did Microsoft Flight Simulator, which we'll talk about a little later, but they were the ones who, who, who made a Plague Tale, and I thought they really should partner up with Xbox on something. And now this isn't an exclusive partnership for Requiem. It still showed up at the show. It's coming on Game Pass Day 1 next year. Um, and I am really, really excited. The, the kind of reveal with this trailer, you know, I noticed the, I saw the, the setting and I was like, okay. And then I saw the Focus Home Interactive logo and I was like, Okay, and then I saw the Asobo logo, and I was like, "No way!" And I heard Amicia's voice, and it's it's a Plague Tale. I never thought it would get a trailer because it's just so you know. The first game was an indie game, and so a lot of those kinds of double A indie games don't really get you know, no matter how good they are, it's kind of rare that they get sequels. And a Plague Tale is getting a sequel, a Plague Tale Requ Requiem. Coming next year, it's coming to Xbox Series X and S, Windows 10 PC, Xbox Cloud Gaming, and it'll be on Game Pass Day 1, obviously. This game is one of my, is probably my most anticipated game of next year. Uh, the reveal was crazy. I was doing backflips, <laughs> cartwheels, you name it. This game, this reveal, this trailer was probably my favorite moment of E3 2021. Um, shout out to Asobo Studio. I cannot wait for this game and and the to to get back you know into the the story of Amicia and Hugo and their adventure uh man it's going to be incredible um then Far Cry 6 came back with a brand new trailer obviously it's coming October 7th to Xbox Series X and S Xbox One and Windows 10 PC nothing new here to see well i mean a couple things it was a new action trailer you got to see some of the uh, you know, like an animal, the rooster. You could uh, kind of make attack enemies for you. There's a, a buggy that you could pull a lever and it turns into a gliding uh, kind of vehicle. Cool stuff there, but just like an another action trailer for Far Cry 6. Then Slime Rancher 2 got a reveal trailer coming 2022 to Xbox Series X, S, Windows 10 PC, Xbox Cloud Gaming, and Game Pass Day One. I played a little bit of this of the first Slime Rancher. Really, really like it. It's a cute little management game. You're sucking up slimes. You're putting them in pens. You're feeding them. They're producing materials for you. It's a good time, Slime Rancher Two. Then Shredder's got a reveal trailer. Get ready to shred that gnar. Come in December 2021 to Xbox Series X, S, Xbox Cloud Gaming, and Game Pass Day One. That's a snowboarding game. Atomic Heart got a brand new trailer. Atomic Heart, I've had my eye on this game for so long. I was, you know, I saw, I noticed that it was Atomic Heart and I was expecting a release date at the end of this, but no, we did not get one. Not even a release year, um, but this game looks incredible. You have to, you have to see it. It's magnificent. Uh, it's this first person shooter uh, in this kind of weird futuristic tech world with a lot of these like freaky mannequin enemies coming at you it's just awesome and i'm really looking forward to this this game atomic heart uh we don't know when it's coming but it's coming to xbox series x and s xbox one windows 10 pc and xbox cloud gaming it will be on game pass day one so maybe the fact that xbox has already made a game pass deal with it means that it's coming out sooner than they're letting on i don't know but there is no window for it uh, which is strange. Next, an indie game called Replaced got a reveal trailer coming in 2022 for Xbox Series XS, Xbox One, Windows 10 PC, Xbox Cloud Gaming coming to Game Pass day one as well. So yeah, Replaced is a really awesome looking indie game. It's a 2D kind of pixel game with some action, some climbing, stuff like that. I'm into it. Grounded came to the stage with the Shroom and Doom update uh, coming June 30th. Then Among Us is still coming to Xbox soon. It's got an update out now that increases the lobby size to 15 players with three imposters Among Us. And that's out June 15th. So basically right now, as you're watching this, 
Uh, then, Euden Chronicle Rising coming 2022 to Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, Windows 10 PC, and Xbox Cloud Gaming. It'll be on Game Pass Day 1. So that's a, a, a kind of JRPG. And then, to kind of go with that, Euden Chronicle 100 Heroes is coming 2023 to Xbox Series X, S, Xbox One, Windows 10 PC, Xbox Cloud Gaming, and Game Pass Day One. So those Euden Chronicle games are JRPGs. They actually look really cool. They use, uh, or one of them, I think, uses 2D sprites in a 3D environment. So that looks really, really cool. Uh, the Ascent got a brand new trailer, and it's still coming July 29th to Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, Windows 10 PC, and Xbox Cloud Gaming, Game Pass Day One, of course. The Ascent is a cyberpunky um, kind of cyberpunk themed isometric uh, twin stick RPG. It looks awesome. Age of Empires 4 got a new trailer and it's coming October 28th to Windows 10 PC, Xbox Cloud Gaming, and it'll be on Game Pass Day One. The Outer Worlds 2. Yeah, you heard me right. The Outer Worlds 2 was revealed. Coming to Xbox uh, Series X and S, Windows 10 PC, Xbox Cloud Gaming, and Game Pass Day 1. There is no release window for this game because they basically just started development. Uh, it came with a really snarky, funny trailer of the narrator making fun of how cliche these game trailers are now. But yeah, I was not expecting The Outer Worlds 2 this early. I know it's still very, very, very early in development, but I didn't think we'd hear about it this soon. Um, Obsidian's already working on Avowed and Grounded, so it looks like they have their third team already spinning up The Outer Worlds 2. They just finished the DLC for the first game, so it kind of makes sense they're starting on this now. But man, like I did not expect to hear about it uh, this this early in, in, in production. I think we're not going to hear about this game again for another several years. Um, which is okay, uh, but it's really cool trailer, really hyped. When that title card came up and, and the mute, that, that theme came up, that Outer Worlds theme that I love so much started playing, it almost made me tear up. I, I It was unbelievable. Um, so, and of course, you know, the first game had some jank. It lacked some visual polish. The gunplay was stiff, but that was private division that was made before my, the acquisition for the most part this is going to be with microsoft's money with microsoft support xbox is behind this sequel and, it, and i expect it to look vastly improved i expect it to play a lot better id software and machine games from bethesda are now part of the xbox family and i expect some collaboration going on between these studios to make sure the outer world's gunplay is a lot smoother and feels a lot better than it did in the first game so the outer world's 2 i expect it to be vastly improved and i'm very excited to get back into the world of the outer worlds because it's a world that i love that being said i need to get into those dlcs as soon as possible actually i have some time to wait because this game is going to be is going to be a while before we even learn about more of it so really so the, my two favorite announcements so far of xbox is shown probably all of e3 are a plague tale requiem and the outer worlds 2 two sequels from 2019 games that i cannot wait to get my hands on but i'm gonna have to wait a little bit as we all are but i gotta move on two we're in the home stretch of xbox's show this is one of the longest shows of the of E3, but Microsoft Flight Simulator is coming to Xbox Series X and S on July 27th, and it'll be on Game Pass Day 1. Additionally, a Top Gun expansion is coming this fall, so Microsoft Flight Sim, maybe I'll get my hands on it if I can get my hands on a Series X first, you know what I mean? Forza Horizon 5 got a reveal trailer coming November 9th. This is going to be set in Mexico. I was expecting and hoping for Japan, but after seeing this reveal trailer, after seeing that absolutely stunning gameplay, the game is made to blow people's minds visually, uh, and it, and it will, and it, and it blew my mind with that with that gameplay. Man, like this is, you know, I got into a Forza Horizon Four a couple of days ago because I got a brand new Xbox One X, and I wanted to see that game uh, looking better. And golly, these these Forza Horizon games are gorgeous. And I'm very excited for Forza Horizon 4. In November, of course, it's coming to Xbox Series X, Xbox One, Windows 10 PC, and it'll be obviously on Game Pass Day 1. 
one of my my most anticipated games of the year. Maybe not my most, but I think Halo has that. But um, Forza Horizon Five is going to be special. Xbox has a really great one-two punch this fall with Halo and Forza. To round out the show, Arcane Austin. Their last game that they made was Prey back in 2017. But guess what, folks? They're back with their new one. A new IP for Xbox. This is another Xbox exclusive, obviously, because Arcane is now part of Xbox Game Studios. Uh, Redfall is coming summer 2022. It's a really, really cool looking vampire hunting game. You have four characters, kind of teens or early 20s characters fighting vampires but these four characters also have superpowers of their own they can levitate they could use weird purple umbrellas that blast people uh they have a lot of cool looking weapons it's it's uh we don't know what kind of game it is yet is it going to be co-op is it going to be single player narrative focused uh, i'm hoping for the latter i don't i hope this isn't too focused on co-op i'm hoping for a single player experience with optional co-op um, I want single player first, co-op second is what I want and need out of this. But we don't know anything uh, about that yet. Oh uh, yeah, it's set in Massachusetts. It's got that campy like Halloween vibe to it. Uh, Cause you know, you're fighting vampires. It's gonna, it's gonna be a little camp to it, but I love it. I love it. They, they really rolled with that and, and, and focused on it. Redfall looks awesome. I do need to know a little bit more before I'm like that hyped about it. But as long as it's a single-player focused video game, I am down 100%. If it's co-op focused, I'm, I'll be a little bit concerned because when you start up a new campaign, like, who do you play as, right? I'm hoping it's, you know, those characters that, that they showed in the trailer are probably going to be in the game. But, like, and I love, by the way, how they interact with each other, the jokes, the humor in this trailer spoke to me a lot. Uh, I really appreciated that. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of this for this trailer's humor. Um but like when you start a new single player campaign, are you, you do you like pick a character, or is it going to be like you're going to naturally uh, swap to different characters based on where the story is? I don't know, but I, I'm itching to find out more about Redfall. Uh, obviously, I think I said this already. Uh, Xbox Series X and S, Windows 10 PC, Cloud Gaming, Game Pass Day One, um, Summer of Next Year. I. You know, I think that's going to hold. I think it, it will come out in the summer of next year because it's it's been since 2017, since their last. This is Arcane Austin's team, uh, separate from the Deathloop team that's that's working on Deathloop right now. So I, I expect this to come out next year, next summer. And you know, I'm looking forward to hearing more on Redfall. But that rounds out the Xbox showcase. Highlights for me were obviously Starfield. Getting to see a little bit, just a little bit more of that. Uh, RPG Epic uh, w was really cool. Getting a solid release date. Gonna have to wait a little bit longer for it. Uh, Battlefield 2042 looks freaking awesome. 12 minutes. Very excited for that. Somerville, one of my favorite indies of E3 2021. That Play Dead. It's not Play Dead themselves. They're, they're still working on their game, but this has Play Dead's DNA all over it, Somerville. Then Halo Infinite, that story. Give me that multiplayer. The more I think about the multiplayer, the more excited I am for it. So Halo Infinite's one of my most anticipated of the year. Of course, the Plague Tale Requiem. Still stunned that it's getting a sequel. Um, one of the most hypest moments of the show. Slime Rancher 2. Gonna, gonna, gonna get more into Slime Rancher there. Atomic Heart, obviously, looks stunning. Replaced, looks amazing. Uh, and of course, the Outer Worlds 2 I'm over the moon for, especially because it's going to look a lot better than the first and, and perform a lot better than the first game. Uh, Forza Horizon 5, hyped for that. And then Redfall were all my highlights, a lot of highlights. This, in my opinion, was Xbox's best show in a long time. Uh, way better than their showcase last year. This, you know, pedal to the metal from start to finish, from Todd Howard to Redfall. It was, they went ballistic, they went crazy. Uh, here at E3 2021, my favorite uh, show of them all. Um, and that usually doesn't work out that way. In, in previous years, sometimes Xbox's show, you know, it wasn't that good. Like in 2017, it wasn't that great. You know, in, in years like those, Ubisoft maybe had a better show in my opinion. But this year, Xbox was E3. Um, and But I got to move on because we have a lot more to get to. 
Next up was Square Enix's E3 2021 showcase. They started it off with Guardians of the Galaxy with a reveal trailer and gameplay demo coming October 26th. So this is uh, Eidos Montreal's new game. It is a triple A Guardians of the Galaxy video game, which had me really excited. You know, we got the gameplay deep dive. You're Peter Quill. You're uh, kind of leading the Guardians both in cutscene decisions and during gameplay. Peter can instruct different characters. You know, Rocket, go attack this character. You know, Drax, cover this area. Like, there's, you know, it's not just in the cutscenes where you're leading the Guardians. It's in the combat. The combat looks awesome. My one complaint is that it doesn't seem like you'll be able to play as the other Guardians. It seems like Star-Lord is the only playable hero here. How can you have a Guardians, a triple A Guardians of the Galaxy video game and not allow me to play as all five Guardians? I'm hoping that's just information that they decided to hold off on, you know, for, you know, play, play the cards close to their chest, so to speak, because that would be majorly disappointing, in my opinion, to only get to play as Star, as Star Lord. Uh, you know, maybe they have plans for that. Maybe there are segments in the campaign, in the story, where you could play as them, or maybe DLC, but, uh, but you know, very, very excited for Guardians of the Galaxy, and it's out this October, which is the even crazier part, that, you know, they just revealed it at E3, boom, dropped this October. I love that kind of stuff. That's what e is all about, the surprises, the holy shit, this is coming out, like, next week or whatever you know not next week obviously but uh you know that that kind of hype is 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 exciting to me for e3 and guardians of the galaxy delivered on that uh very very excited to check this game out uh coming to xbox series x s xbox one ps4 and 5 and pc so that's guardians of the galaxy october 26th additionally marvel's avengers was a huge letdown in my opinion last year this is not a live service game, I might add. Uh, it's not going in that direction. It is a single player focused, uh, you know, story adventure here. Um, so not live service. That's incredible news. That's probably the best news about this game so far. Um, but next, got to move on. Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster got revealed for Final Fantasy 1 through 6. Coming to Steam and mobile soon. Legend of Mana coming June 24th to Switch, PS4, and Steam. Then Marvel's Avengers updates, uh, showed off some of the 2021 roadmap. Cosmic Cube event coming in June this month. Wasteland Patrol and War for Wakanda expansion is coming. That's obviously gonna feature Black Panther, uh, and that expansion is gonna be free. Hitman Sniper The Shadows coming 2021 to mobile. Near Reincarnation, you could pre-register now, coming to mobile. Love Nier, by the way. Nier Replicant was good. Final Fantasy Brave XVS War of the Visions X. Uh, limited collaboration. Uh, cross Final Fantasy 1, I believe. Limited collaboration coming June 16th to July 13th on mobile. Final Fantasy Brave XVS 5th Anniversary Countdown Campaign coming June, tw June 17th to mobile. Uh, Final Fantasy 7 The First Soldier 2021 to iOS and Android. Babylon's Fall got a gameplay trailer coming to PS4 and 5 and Steam. It's going to be a live service game. That's a, um, you know, interesting tidbit of information they revealed there. Then Life is Strange Remastered Collection coming September 30th. And Life is Strange True Colors got a new gameplay trailer coming September 10th. I'm a huge Life is Strange fan. Very excited for Life is Strange True Colors in September. I really can't wait to get back into that Life is Strange world. Love it, love it, love it. Aside from Guardians of the Galaxy, very excited for Life is Strange from Square Enix. Uh, Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin coming 2022 to Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PS4, and 5, and PC. This is kind of a new third-person action-adventure game. Uh, looks interesting to me. Uh, you gotta kill chaos, they say. They said a lot in the trailer. Uh, but I'm look, kind of looking forward to it. It looks neat. It's coming to Xbox, a Final Fantasy game coming to Xbox. I'm down for it every time. Then we got a little bit of a sizzle reel to round it out. You could play now these titles. Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade, Near Replicant, which I played, Outriders. Uh, you could play this summer, 
Neo, The World Ends With You, Life is Strange True Colors, Marvel's Avengers War for Wakanda expansion, and then the More to Come segment of the Sizzle Reel. For Spoken, Final Fantasy 16, Final Fantasy 14, Online Endwalker, and Guardians of the Galaxy. But yeah, that was Square Enix's show. Very short, very simple. I do think they needed this show. Uh, you know, there wasn't that much in it. The highlights for me, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Marvel's Avengers updates. I'm not really into that game. I played the campaign once and then dipped, but uh, I really like their character models and Black Panther looks awesome in the trailer. So I might, I might revisit it in the future. We'll see. And then Life is Strange True Colors, very hyped. And then Stranger of Paradise Final, Final Fantasy Origin were my four highlights of the show. I think they had enough here to warrant the show, unlike Gearbox and some others coming up. Uh, they had enough here. Uh, you know, the mobile segment in, in the middle was kind of weak, but, you know, it's, it's mobile stuff. You know, there's an audience for that. I get it. Um, but yeah, Guardians and Life is Strange Two Colors are my highlights there for Square Enix. But we have to move on right now to the PC Gaming Show. We start with Naraka Blade Point with a new trailer out August 12th on Steam and Epic. It's getting an open beta June 16th to the 22nd. And additionally, a chainsaw weapon will be out now. Will be out in August, not out now. Naraka Blade Point is a really cool multiplayer kind of battle royale thing. It looks awesome. Wish it was coming to Xbox. Hope it's coming soon. Um, but yeah, August 12th, Steam and Epic. Then Dodgeball Academia coming 2021 on Xbox, PS4, Switch, and PC. Chivalry 2 post launch teases. Games available now on Epic, PS4, and 5. Series X and S and Xbox One. Ramen got a reveal trailer coming to Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and 5, and PC. Dying Light 2 Stay Human got story details coming December 7th of this year, obviously, to Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, PS4 and 5, and PC. Uh, kind of excited for Dying Light 2. I need to play the first game. Got to get around to that. Uh, but Dying Light 2 looks pretty cool. Humankind. Frankie Ward is in the game. Frankie Ward is one of the hosts of PC Gamer Show every year. She is in Humankind. The closed beta is out now, and it's coming in August 17th to Epic, Stadia, and Steam. They Always Run got a gameplay trailer, and it's coming soon. Orcs Must Die 3 coming July 23rd. It's a co-op tower defense game uh, to Steam, PlayStation, and Xbox. Vampire the Masquerade the masquerade swan song coming to epic ps4 and 5 xbox series x and s xbox one and nintendo switch um gigabash got a gameplay trailer coming to playstation 4 and pc lemnis gate got a gameplay trailer it's coming august 3rd to steam pc xbox series x and s xbox one playstation 4 and 5 it's a kind of it's a first person shooter turn-based strategy game very interesting concept there next space rebels coming fall 2021 to Xbox, Nintendo Switch, and PC. War Tales got a reveal trailer coming 2021 to Steam. It's an open-world isometric RPG. Ixion got a cinematic trailer coming 2022 to Steam. Far Changing Tides got a reveal trailer to Steam, PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. No release window. Lakeburg Legacy has got a reveal trailer coming to Steam. Killing Floor 2 Interstellar Insanity is getting new maps, moon base, and new weapons June 22nd. Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries updates for it. Uh, Heroes of the Inner Space DLC available now uh, on Steam, GOG, Epic, PC, and Xbox. So that's all for Mech Warrior. Uh, Silt got a reveal trailer. Really cool looking indie game coming to Steam. No release window on that. Hello Neighbor 2 got a new trailer coming 2021 to Xbox and Steam. Jurassic World Evolution 2 got a reveal got a reveal trailer. It was also at uh, Jeff Keighley's kickoff live a couple days uh, earlier. Coming 2021 to Steam, PS4 and 5, X, uh, Xbox Series XS, Xbox One and Epic Game Store. New Blood Interactive Sizzle Reel. And in that reel was Ultra Kill, Fallen Aces, A Medieval, The Black Labyrinth, Unfortunate Spacemen, Dusk, 82, Kyle is Completely Famous, Faith, The Unholy Trinity, and uh, Gloomwood, and Dusk. Then Gabe Newell came out 
uh, to announce the Steam Next Fest with a trailer. Um, the games included were Sable, Tiny Thor, Undead Citadel, Rogue Lords. Uh, Undead Citadel and Rogue Lords are two, two separate games, by the way. Guinea Pig Parkour, Fallen Aces, Lost Adelons, Fairy Afterlight, and Grime. And the Steam Next Fest is a kind of uh, thing where you could download demos of all of those games and more uh, to play during the summer, I suppose, on Steam. Then Solstice got a reveal trailer coming 2022 to PS5, Xbox Series X and S, PC, and Steam. That's a kind of Souls-like, uh, really cool looking game character designs and everything look awesome. Uh, hardware section for the PC Gamer Show showed off three things. The, Impo the Impulse Neuro Controller, which is a controller that attaches to your hands and reads your uh, electric uh, neuron activity within your hand and does the control before your finger presses the mouse button, which is kind of insane. The CSL DD wheel base, which is a kind of driving wheel base for it. One X player, which is an 8.5 inch screen thing, like a mo PC mobile device. And then the Asus PG32U2X 32 inch 4K monitor. So that's the hardware stuff. Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate Daemon Hunters got a reveal trailer coming 2022 to Steam and Epic. There's a full cinematic reveal for that coming in August. Pioneer or Pioneer got a, got a reveal gameplay trailer. It's kind of a Stalker 2 inspired uh, type of thing. No release window. Eve Online got a c commercial. Uh, Lumber Hill out now on Steam, coming to Nintendo Switch in Q quarter four of 2021. Arbornia got a reveal trailer to 3D action roguelike, coming in August on Steam. Tiny King got a reveal trailer coming 2022. Chernobylite got a new trailer. It's coming July 28th to Steam, Epic, and GOG, and summer 2021 to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. That's a really cool looking game, Chernobylite. Also reminiscent of a stalker type of experience. Sacrifice, uh, Sacrifier got a reveal trailer. It's available now on Kickstarter to back. Icarus got a new trailer. It's coming August 11th to Steam. Mecha Jammer got a reveal trailer coming soon to Steam. The Wandering Village got a reveal, got a reveal trailer coming to Steam. No window on that. Death Trash. Got a reveal trailer coming to Steam. Early access on August 5th. Songs of Conquest got a new trailer coming early 2022 to GOG, Steam, and Epic. Citizen Sleeper got a reveal trailer coming 2022. And Project Warlock 2 coming June 29th to Kickstarter and July 29th on GOG in development and Steam early access. That's the PC Gamer Show in a nutshell. Uh, some highlights for me, uh, Naraka Blade Point, Chivalry 2 looks cool, Dying Light 2 obviously, Orcs Must Die 3, I'm not really into tower defense, but I could get, I see myself getting into it. Uh, Lemnus Gate, interesting idea. Ixion, really cool cinematic trailer. Silt, uh, looks like a really cool Limbo-esque type of indie game. New Blood Interactive Sizzle Reel is really cool. Their game Faith the Holy Trinity has my attention. Uh, Solstice, really cool Souls-like game. Pioneer, a uh, really cool Stalker-esque game. Like I said earlier, I'm sold on Stalker 2, so anything else that looks like Stalker is going to look cool to me, including Chernobylite. And then lastly, Death Trash was a highlight for me, a really cool-looking indie game there. We got to move on to the Future Games Show. Future Games Show is a bunch of indie games in a show, and it started off with Instinction with a reveal trailer coming 2022. It's a kind of dinosaur-esque type of thing. Grow Song of the Evertree coming to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Steam, Switch in 2021. Jurassic World Evolution 2 showed up again with a new trailer. Of course, coming to Steam, PS4 and 5, Epic Games Store, Xbox Series X and S, and Xbox One in 2021. Steam demos uh, are, so these are demos of games that you could demo right now on Steam. They are A Tale of Paper, Get Packed Fully Loaded, 
coming to Xbox One, PS4, PC, PS5, Xbox Series X and X. Gatewalkers, Game Deck, Backbone, which is on my radar. It looks awesome. Really cool looking indie, pixel indie game there. Beacon Pines, Trifox, Timberborn, and Rift Breaker. All available on Steam demos. Esports Boxing Club got a reveal gameplay trailer. Uh, common to PC early access in 2021. Coming later to Xbox Series XS and Xbox One as well as PS4 and 5. Hell Let Loose got a new trailer coming to Steam on July 27th. Coming to Xbox Series XS and PlayStation 5 in 2021. Red Solstice 2 Survivors coming to, coming to Steam on June 2017th. Lake is on my radar. It's a mail delivery type of game. Really chill vibe there. But it got a new trailer. It's coming to Xbox Series XS, Steam, and Epic on September 1st. Eldest Souls got a reveal trailer coming on July 29th to Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and 5, PC, and Nintendo Switch. Enlisted got a brand new trailer. It's in open beta right now on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5. That's really really cool one where you could you're in a you're in the match and you have uh, NPC companions fighting alongside you and you could actually switch to them to control them at, at your will. It's a really cool idea enlisted. Severed Steel coming soon to Steam, Xbox, and PlayStation. Then we got a nice little sizzle reel, including Dice Legacy coming summer 21 to Nintendo Switch and PC. Gestalt, Steam, and Cinder coming in the fall, in autumn 2021 to Switch and PC. Iron Corbo Kung Fu Janitor coming 2022 to Xbox and PC. Definitely not Fried Chicken Incorporated coming to Steam. Ranch Sim out now on PC. Shim on PC. Silt, like we saw before on the PC Gamer Show, coming early 2022 to PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. Dome King Cabbage coming to PC. Then that sizzle reel ended. Then we got Sonic Colors Ultimate with a new gameplay trailer coming to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC on September 7th. Starmancer, Steam Early Access, August 5th. It's a cozy sci-fi kind of management game that caught my attention. Kiwi, August 31st, coming to Steam, Switch, Xbox Series XS, Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and 5. Death Run TV, coming to Steam, Xbox Series XS, Nintendo Switch, PS4, and 5. Chernobylite got a new gameplay trailer. It's coming, as we know, July 28th on Steam, Epic, and GOG, and Summer 21 on Xbox One and PS4. Then we got a little Team 17 sizzle reel. Hell Let Loose coming to PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and S in 2021. Super Magbot coming June 22nd to Steam and Switch. Hoko Life out now on Steam Early Access. Honey, I Joined a Cult coming in September to Steam Early Access. King of Seas out now on Switch, P PS4, on Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and Steam. Greek Memories of Azure coming August 17th to Steam, Switch, Xbox Series X and S, and PlayStation 5. Sheltered 2 coming summer of 21 to Steam. Overcooked 2 Birthday Party on August 9th, as well as the All You Can Eat free update. One of an indie game that's been on my radar for a while, Harold Halibut, got a new gameplay trailer, and it's coming soon. I was really expecting a release date when I saw this trailer pop up, but it's coming soon. Two, PC, PlayStation, and Xbox, Harold Halibut, one of my most anticipated indie games. It is, of course, the uh, claymation game made entirely by hand in a kind of, it's kind of a Wes Anderson uh, the Life Aquatic kind of vibe to it. It looks awesome, and I'm excited for it. Coming soon. Happy Game is coming fall 2021 to PC, Mac, and Switch. Minute of Islands is out now on Steam, GOG, Humble Store, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. Dying Light 2 Stay Human came back. Every couple of years, there's these games that show up at multiple shows. Dying Light 2 is one of them. Back with the developer Q&A, of course, as we know, coming December 7th to Xbox Series XS, Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and 5, and PC. Ali Ali World got a new trailer coming to PS4 and 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, Nintendo Switch, and PC in winter of 2021. Tales of Iron coming to PS4 and 5, Xbox Series X, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. 
movie games sizzle reel. So this is another sizzle reel, including Lust from Beyond coming quarter three, 2021 on Steam. Fire Commander coming to Steam, Epic, PS4 and 5 and Xbox. Winter Survival Simulator coming soon to Steam. And then we got another sizzle reel after that, the X Seed Games sizzle reel, including Akiba's Trip, Hellbound, and Debriefed coming July 20th to PS4, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Shadowverse Champions Battle coming August 10th to Nintendo Switch. Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town coming fall 2021 to PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X and S, and Xbox One. Rune Factory 4 Special coming fall 2021 to Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. Rune Factory 5 coming early 2022 to Nintendo Switch. Then at, that's the end of the X Seed Sizzler. Then to round out uh, a couple more games for the future game show, but Tore Out Lost Haven coming to Steam, PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox Series X and S, and Switch. There's a closed alpha on PC coming July 20, 21st. 21st, yes, July 21st. Two Point Campus got a new trailer coming to Xbox Series X, S, Xbox One, PS4 and 5, Nintendo Switch, and Steam. Project Ferocious, it's a code name for the game, got a reveal trailer coming 2023. War Cry Challenges got a reveal trailer coming to Steam in the summer. Conway Disappearance of Dolly of View. Disappearance at Dahlia View coming autumn 2021 for Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PS4 and 5, and Steam. And then finally, to round out the show, Immortality got a reveal trailer coming 2022. And that's the future game show. A ton of games. Some highlights for me. Lake, a really cool looking indie game. Like I said before, mail delivery, chill vibes. Enlisted, Starmancer, a really cute looking sci-fi management game. Um, Harold Halibut, of course. It's been on my radar for years. Happy Game, really sadistic looking game. Minute of, I Minute of Islands looks cool. Dying Light 2, obviously, had to circle that one. Project Ferocious, looks like it's a really cool dinosaur hunting, I believe. First person shooter out in 2023 is targeting. Um, Conway Disappearance at Dahlia View was a really cool looking detective sort of game. And Immortality looks really dope as well. But we have to move on. Moving on to a couple of smaller shows. Uh, these shows are not going to be as long as the PC Gamer show. But we're moving on to Intellivision's E3 2021 showcase. And they showed off a console. The Intellivision Amico console. It's going to come with six pack-in games included. It's going to come... There's going to be physical games coming soon. Digital games are 10 bucks or less at launch. Physical games are $19.99 at launch. Um, so the games included are Astros or games, uh, you know, not included in the six pack, but games coming to the system are Astro Smash, Night Stalker, Breakout, Asteroids, Tempest, Missile Command, and many, many more. All, all of these games for this console will feature and contain single player and multiplayer slash couch co-op. So this is not a kind of Xbox competitor. It's not a PlayStation competitor. This is a kind of co-op-y, family fun type of console. It it looks kind of um it's not not it looks not expensive. There is no price for the console or release date mentioned at the showcase. But it looks like a fun little you know uh you know cheap option for just fun couch co-op stuff with your friends or family. Nothing major. These games don't look like industry defining or game of the year winning type of things. They're, 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 you know, kid-friendly, family-friendly type of deal. Intellivision, Amico console, and that's their showcase. Moving on to Mythical Games E3 2021 showcase. Blanco's Block Party, free on PC, early access. And that's the only game they showed. Those Blanco's vinyl dolls that you could customize and draw on, whatever. There's a game for that. It looks like fun game modes or whatever. But the focus is on buying and collecting and selling these Blancos, these digital Blancos. And that's it for Mythical Games. The, by the way, their showcase seemed like a scam. This this game, Blancos Block Party, where you're selling and, and, and you know, it looks like a scam to me. You could look more into it, but that's Mythical Games. Got to move on. Then the E3 2021 Indie Showcase, couple of games here. Life Slide coming August 6th, 6th to Steam. Hooded Horse. 
this is a hooded horse sizzle here briefly falling frontier alliance of the sacred sons and terra invicta all there for hooded horse games then fallen aces got a new trailer larsenauts coming summer 2021 to oculus and steam vr toy soldiers hd coming august 2021 to switch xbox one playstation 4 and steam moolander coming spring 2022 to steam playstation 4 xbox one and switch bark coming to nintendo switch and steam tonga uska the visitation coming to steam uh nico ghost jump coming soon to xbox one playstation 4 switch steam and epic and to round out the indie showcase extra galactica uh infinite mode is now available campaign mode is in development coming to steam early access so that's the little indie showcase there the one game that stood out to me was fallen aces shown also at the pc gamer show it's a kind of uh gangster noir 30s kind of uh you know first person 2d sprites in a 3d environment kind of deal almost like doom but with like punching and shooting and it looks awesome fallen aces moving right along to freedom games e3 2021 showcase a couple games here too just a handful showed off dreamscaper coming august 12th to nintendo switch airborne kingdom coming 2021 to xbox series x xbox one playstation 4 and 5 and nintendo switch koromon which is a pokemon type of game coming quarter one 2022 to steam and switch cat cafe manager coming quarter two 2022 to steam and switch to the rescue coming quarter four of 2021 to steam and switch slaughter league coming quarter two to 2022 to steam dark dd coming to steam one lonely outpost coming to 2022 and steam early access sands of aura no release date or platforms uh yet tower rush coming 2022 to steam and lastly anucard quarter one 2022 to xbox series x and s xbox one and steam and that does it for the freedom games e3 2021 showcase standouts for me are airborne kingdom a kind of management game or city builder on top of a airborne vessel uh then slaughter league looked cool a kind of doritos crash course type of deal going on there and then one lonely outpost a cute little management game that caught my attention sci-fi themed as well uh moving right along to capcom capcom's e3 2021 showcase i don't think capcom needed a showcase and you'll see why they started with resident evil reverse announcing that it's going live next month across all supported platforms resident evil village it's announced that DLCs are coming. They're starting production on DLCs for that game. That actually has me quite excited. Loved Resident Evil Village. Can't wait for more. Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin. Got a new story trailer. A very, very long one, by the way. Some would say maybe too long. Uh, new Monsty. And they're called Monsties, not monsters in the game. New Monsty Palamute coming July 15th. There's a trial for the game on June 25th, and it's coming July 9th on Nintendo Switch. Then Monster Hunter Rise, June and July updates. Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin collabs with uh, DLC and event quests. Monster Hunter Rise version 3.1 is on June 24th. And then The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles coming Ju uh, July 27th to PlayStation 4, Switch, and Steam. Got a gameplay trailer showing off the Dance of Deduction and Summation Examination gameplay features. And then some, to round out Capcom show, some Street Fighter esports stuff. I really don't think Capcom needed a showcase. All of this stuff could have went down on a E3 Coliseum-like type of panel. But, of course, they didn't have an E3 Coliseum panel, I don't think, this year, because it was all digital. So this is all stuff that should have shown up at a panel, not at an actual showcase. The highlight for me out of this, the one and only Resident Evil Village DLCs on the way. That has me excited, at least. But we're moving right along to Nintendo's E3 2021 showcase. There's quite a bit here from Nintendo, so strap on in. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Kazuya gets ready for the next battle that's right their next hero uh, in the game from tekken is kazuya uh boom there you go i know uh, smash fans always getting excited for new characters joining there you go 
Next, both Life is Strange Remastered Collection and Life is Strange True Colors are coming to Nintendo Switch uh, when they come out normally, uh, which is in September, I believe. Uh, September 10th for True Colors and later in September, I believe, for the Remastered Collection. Um, moving on, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy is coming to Switch on October 26th. Worms Rumble uh, coming to Nintendo Switch on June 23rd. Astria Ascending coming to Switch on September 30th. Two Point Campus comes to Switch next year. Super Monkey Bowl Banana Mania comes to Switch on October 5th. Mario Party Superstars comes to Switch on October 29th. Metroid Dread got a reveal trailer and gameplay coming to Switch on October 8th. Just Dance 2022 to Switch on November 4th. Cruisin' Blast to Switch in the fall. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot plus a new Power Awakens set coming to Switch on September 24th. Mario Golf Super Rush got a new gameplay trailer coming to Switch on June 25th. Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin comes to Switch on July 9th plus a free demo on June 25th. WarioWare Get It Together comes to Switch on September 10th. Shin Megami Tensei 5 got a reveal and gameplay trailer coming to the Nintendo Switch on November 12th. Dragon Rampa Decadence coming to Switch later this year. Additionally, Trigger Happy Havoc Danganronpa Anniversary Edition, Danganronpa 2 Goodbye Despair Anniversary Edition, Danganronpa V3 Anniversary Edition Killing Harmony, Danganronpa 5 Ultimate Summer Camp are all coming to Switch later this year. Fatal Frame Maiden of Black Water coming to Switch this year. Doom Eternal, The Ancient Gods Part 1 coming to Switch, and it's out now. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 coming to Switch on June 25th. Strange Brigade coming to Switch right now. Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope coming to Switch 2022, like we said, like we saw in the Ubisoft show. Advanced Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp coming to Switch December 3rd. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity Expansion Pass Wave 1 Pulse of the Ancients coming June 18th. Wave 2 of that Guardian of Remembrance coming November 2021. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD got a gameplay trailer coming to Switch July 16th. And then this was cool, a little Game & Watch The Legend of Zelda system. It's got four games built in, The Legend of Zelda, The Adventure of Link, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, and Game & Watch Vermin. And that system with those four games included are coming November 12th. And lastly, to end the show, Nintendo brought out The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel with a brand new teaser, a short one, coming in 2022. So that's for all you Zelda fans or Nintendo fans went crazy for that little teaser trailer from Zelda The Breath of the Wild sequel. That's Nintendo's E3 show. We're moving right along to Bandai Namco's E3 2021 showcase. House of Ashes got a new trailer coming October 22nd. Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PlayStation 4 and 5, and PC. And that's it for Bandai Namco's E3 21 showcase. But seriously, that's the only game that they showed off. I really don't think they need an entire showcase for an interview for one game. Uh, House of Ashes is the um, part of the Dark Pictures anthology, um, by the way, but you didn't need a whole showcase for that. That was a E3 Coliseum thing, um, but there wasn't one this year, which might explain why these things existed. We are now in the home stretch. We only have two more showcases to cover. One of them is Eureka Games with their E3 2021 showcase. They showed off a handful of indies. First one is Loopmancer. It's a really cool 2D looking sci-fi cyberpunk style uh, action game. Looks really dope. No release window or platforms announced. Then, SWS Extremely Realistic Siege Warfare Simulator is getting a Steam demo, and that Steam demo, get this, is out now. Metal Mind gets a Steam demo available June 16th. The Swordsman, uh, the Swordsman X Survival coming to Steam later this year. Tales of Wild coming to Steam 2021 slash 2022. That's what they said. The Immortal Mayor coming to, uh, has a Steam demo available June 16th. Reshaping Mars has a Steam demo out now. And Maism 
has a Steam demo out now. And that rounds out the Eureka Showcase. Two games caught my attention there, Loopmancer and the Swordsman X Survival. Really cool uh, samurai looking uh, sword fighting game there. Now we have our final showcase of E3 2021. This is like the 16th. <laughs> it's ridiculous this year, but we are uh, right at the end here with GameSpot's Play for All E3 2021 Showcase. They began with Unsighted coming fall 2021 to Steam and Switch. Minds Beneath Us coming to Steam. Super Drink Bros, which is two kind of a Pepsi and Coca-Cola, not exactly the brands, but you know, Pepsi versus Coca-Cola, human-sized drink cups fighting or cans fighting each other. It's pretty dope. Wacky idea. No release window or platforms for Super Drink Bros yet. Rainbow Billy, The Curse of the Leviathan, has a Steam demo out right now. El Paso Elsewhere is coming to Steam. That's a kind of Max Payne looking uh, third person action shooting game. It looks cool. Blockum coming to 2022 to Steam. Rain on Your Parade is out right now on Xbox One, Switch, and Steam. This is actually one that I played a couple weeks ago. Got the 100% achievements in. Rain on Your Parade is a, it's a fun time. Uh, if you're looking for some some achievement hunting fun, rain on your parade. Then Spiral, first episode out 2022 on Steam. Lost Eidolons has a Steam demo coming June 16th. Soup Pot, no release window or platform, but it looks cool. Tandem, A Tale of Shadows coming 2021 to PC, Xbox One, Switch, and PS4. Fractured Veil, no uh, release window or platforms. Lab Rat coming to Steam. She Dreams Elsewhere, which is one I actually had my eye on for a while, coming to Steam, Xbox, Game Pass, Switch, Stadia soon. So She Dreams Elsewhere is on my radar. Derpy Conga is coming fall 2021, and there's a Steam demo out right now. Freshly Frosted is a donut game. No platforms or release window. Chinatown Detective Agency coming 2021 to Steam and Switch. Blind Fate Ito no Yami coming to Steam. No window on that. Brewmaster Beer Brewing Simulator. Give me a beer. That's not part of the title, but I want a beer. That's coming to Steam. What the Duck? No release window or platforms announced for that yet. Townscaper coming August uh, to Switch and PC. And Onsen Master coming 2021. That rounds out the play for all E3 2021 showcase. Highlights for me, Minds Beneath Us. She Dreams Elsewhere looks incredible. Blind Fate, Ido no Yami looks awesome as well. And then Townscaper, four games that stood out to me from that showcase. And that does it for the press conferences. But E3 did have... A little bit of an award ceremony, a little short 10 minute thing going on. Uh, and I'll rattle through that, because uh, why not? The most anticipated Ubisoft game was Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. The most anticipated Gearbox game, Tiny Tina's Wonderland. Most anticipated Xbox game, Halo Infinite. Most anticipated Square Enix game, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Most antici anticipated PC gamer show game, Songs of Conquest. Most anticipated future game show game, Immortality. Most anticipated in television game, which was that console, uh, Asteroids. Most anticipated indie show uh, game, was Fallen Frontier. Most anticipated games, a uh, Freedom Games game, was Airborne Kingdom. Most anticipated Capcom game was The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Most anticipated Nintendo game was, you guessed it, Breath of the Wild 2. Most anticipated Eureka game, Loopmancer. Best show of E3 was Xbox, which I totally agree with. And most anticipated game overall of all of E3, Forza Horizon 5, which I'm not sure if I agree with, but Forza Horizon 5 looks incredible. Um, so yeah, that's it. That does it for E3 2021. Uh, it was a lot better than last year. Still not where I want it to be. I want it to be as, you know, in person and I want to see the crowds and the cheering and everything, but it's been announced that 2022 will be the year where everything goes back to how it was before. But yeah, so I think a solid. I think a solid E3 overall. Some disappointing spots: Gearbox, stuff like Capcom, Bandai Namco. These 
those companies didn't need in, like to fill up a spot on the schedule with the showcase. They could have either dropped a trailer during E3 for their things or had a, had some kind of panel go on in the background behind the scenes. But like usually there's the E3 Coliseum uh, in like a normal E3 where that stuff like that will live instead of being uh, its own showcase. But uh, that's been E3 2021. Highlights, of course, a Playtale Requiem, stuff like The Outer Worlds 2, seeing Xbox pop off, uh, excited for Halo Infinite and Forza Horizon 5 in the fall, um, excited for Ubisoft stuff, yeah, excited for Resident Evil Village DLC, that was a cool one, but yeah, it's been a solid uh, E3, you know, I think Xbox did great, but everyone else around Xbox, you know, a lot of them kind of disappointed. Uh, a lot of them fell flat, and a lot of them didn't even need showcases. But that's been E3 2021. I have been John. This has been Super Positive Games, my annual E3 recap. 16 showcases condensed into the length of one. Until next time, see you later. Goodbye.